Hi, my name is Evie Green, and this is my poi from the 2015-2016 school year. Every three minutes, a woman is beaten. Every five minutes, a woman is raped. Every ten minutes, a little girl is molested. Even tonight. And I need to take a walk and clear my head about this poem, about why I can't go out without changing my clothes, my shoes, my body posture, my gender identity, my age, my status as a woman alone in the evening, alone on the streets. Alone not being the point. The point being that I can't do what I want to do with my own body. Because I am the wrong sex. Violence against women has become a terrifying epidemic in the world today. The sad fact is most women will experience some form of abuse within their life. Be that physical, emotional, or even sexual. Yet many of us elect to ignore this, as these victims will typically stay silent due to the stigma that they have attached, that society has attached with their abuse. Through the Poetry, a poem about my rights by June Jordan, with No Media Cause by Tizoki Shang, Woman Do You Know by Lisa Dietz, and The Prose Speak by Lori Hall Sanderson, we learn that these victims will no longer stay silent. They will be heard. So it's my first morning of high school, and I have seven new notebooks, a skirt that I hate. <laughs> and a stomach ache. There's no point in looking for my ex-friends. Our clan, the plain Janes, has splintered and the pieces are being absorbed by rival factions. The kids behind me laugh so loud that I know they're laughing about me, but I can't help myself. I turn around. It's Rachel, my best well, my ex-best friend. Her eyes meet mine for a second before she whispers, I hate you! I am outcast. Woman, do you know your name? No, the one you had before the scars. The thick makeup covering a sunglass face over red, blue, oily stains. Yet, I rode the subway today. And I sat next to this old man who may have beaten his old wife three minutes ago or three days. Thirty years ago, he might have sodomized his daughter, but I sat there. Cropped hair in a fit of passion, the unpaid hospital bills, the broken nose, bruised ribs, finger, elbow, knee. Nothing left untouched. The homecoming pep rally. I want to stand by the doors, but my new friend Heather drags me up into the freshman section of the bleachers. The girl behind me reaches forward and taps me on the shoulder with her long black nails. Sordino! You're Melissa Sordino! Say, aren't you the one who called the cops at Kyle Rogers' party at the end of the summer? My brother was at that party. He was arrested at that party. You know, he was fired because of that arrest. You know, I can't believe that you did that! I have worked so hard to forget every second of that stupid party, but here I am in the middle of a hostile crowd that hates me for what I had to do. I mean, I can't tell them what really happened. I can barely even look at that part myself. Every three minutes it happens, locking doors, banging walls. Some woman's innocence is going to rush to her cheek or pour from her mouth. Their mouth's menses, red and split. Wipe away the blood, scramble for the phone. The line is dead as the door breaks down. Every three minutes a shoulder is jammed through plaster and the oven door. Chairs will push up through the rib cage. So I'm hanging this poster outside the metal shop room when he creeps up. Little flecks of metal slice through my veins. He whispers to me.
fresh meat. That's what he whispers. He found me again. I thought that I could ignore him. I mean, there are two, 400 other freshmen in here, 200 of them female, plus all of the other grades, but he whispers to me. I can smell him over the noise of the metal shop, and I drop my poster and masking tape, and I want to throw up, and I can smell him, and I run, and he remembers, he knows, he whispers in my ear. Why couldn't I run like this before? when I was still a one-piece talking girl. So I bought the paper and I found this announcement. Not the woman's bloated body in the river. Not the child bleeding in the 59th Street corridor. Not even the baby broken on the floor. No. You see, there is some concern that alleged battered women might begin to murder their husbands and lovers with no immediate cause. <laughs> now finally you start to understand they've screwed me over because I was wrong. I was wrong again to be me where I was. Wrong to be who I am. So Rachel had gotten us into this end of summer party, a cheerleader party with beer and seniors and music. I tasted a beer. <clears throat> it was worse than cough medicine, but I gulped it down. <clears throat> Another beer. <clears throat> and, and then another. And another, and another, and then I was worried I was going to be sick, so I walked out towards the woods, and then there was this step behind me, a, a senior, and then he was talking to me, uh, flirting with me, this gorgeous cover model guy. He took my hand and pulled me against him. My body fit against his perfectly. My head was just level with his shoulder. He wrapped one hand around my back. His other slid down to my butt. Well, I thought that was a little rude, but my tongue was thick with beer, and I, I couldn't figure out how to tell him to slow down, but then he kissed me, hard and sweet and deep. And you know, for just a second there, I thought that I had a boyfriend. But then his teeth ground hard against my lips, and it started to get hard to breathe. Do you want to? What did he say? I, I didn't know. I, I didn't answer. I, I didn't speak. We were on the ground. When did that happen? No, no, I did not like this. I was on the ground and he was on top of me and he's just so heavy that there's this boulder sitting on top of me. So I open my mouth to breathe, to scream, but his hand covers it. In my mind, my voice is clear as a bell. No, I don't want to. We were on the ground and I'm trying to figure out how we got there and where the moon went and the way I'm shirt up, shorts down, and the ground smells wet and dark and he hurts me, he hurts me, he hurts me. Then he gets up, zips his jeans, and smiles. Woman, do you know what you really deserve? When the time comes for apologies, grasping at that tenderness you live for, fingers tracing pain lines on your face, I'll never do it again. I promise. Don't believe it. You see, we all have immediate cause. Every three minutes, every five minutes, every 10 minutes, every day, women's bodies are found in alleys and bedrooms, at the top of the stairs. Before I ride the subway, buy a paper, drink coffee, I must know, have you hurt a woman today? Did you beat a woman today? Throw a child across the room. I have to ask these obscene questions. The authorities require me to establish immediate cause. Every three minutes, every five minutes, 
every 10 minutes. 